It's 2020, and with live events going virtual all over the world, we at Wacom issued a unique artistic challenge. We gathered portfolios from across the Americas, selected eight student artists, and split them into two teams, giving them a Wacom One, some pro animation software, and seven days to create a 45 second animated short. And everything done remotely. This is Cartoon Crunch. Good morning and hello teams. Welcome to day two of Cartoon Crunch. How did you guys like day one so far? It's exciting. Fun, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Good thumbs up. Awesome. So yesterday you guys tackled um, some story duties. Today is all about production design. Everything that is made is designed, whether intentionally or not. So it is up to you to figure out how your films are going to look today. Design can play a very, very important role in your film because there have been good films made um, with bad design and there have been uh, good design films with bad stories. But if you can merge the two with good story and good design, that film will stand out. So we can break designs down into our three basic categories, right? Character, background, and props. But one of the biggest things that I've noticed in a lot of different design is that you have to have an overall design aesthetic. Everything has to look like it all belongs in the same world. And that's really important. Sometimes I've seen films that you know, everything looks a certain way, but then some things look like they don't necessarily belong there. And in some cases, that's intentional in various shows. Other, in other cases, it's not intentional. And we want to make sure that your films have an overall design aesthetic that everything matches and it looks like it belongs all together. Another thing that you should um, be cognizant of in this next little while as you prepare for your mm -hmm. professional mentor visit this afternoon is shape language. So make sure that your shape language is very strong in your designs when you present later. Silhouettes are always a great thing to have in a design lineup. So you can see um, at a distance sort of how all your characters relate to one another and interact with one another. Um, also, expressions and character studies are gonna be good to help you in inform the acting later on of all your characters. Get a, a feel for their personality, how they behave, how they um, how their smile looks, how their frowns look, how they are able to emote just in their face or in their, with their whole bodies. So that is what your assignment is this morning. Um, take the stories from your film and start laying out your designs. Okay? Okay. All right, everybody. It's time to crunch. <laughs> I would like to introduce you to today's uh, guest mentor for Design Day is um, an Argentinian production designer, illustrator, and art director based in Los Angeles. He has over seven years experience in the animation industry, and his practice ranges from art direction and visual development to illustration and comics. He has worked with studios such as Disney Television Animation, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Warner Brothers, and Titmouse Incorporated. Please, everybody, welcome Mr. Luciano Herrera. Hey. Um. So, uh, welcome, Luciano. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So, um, first of all, you know, recently, Luciano, I saw you art directed a short film. Um, how did you start that initial design process when you were figuring out what this film was supposed to look like? Well, I always approach the work through story first. So, um, like we did a lot in DuckTales was always the script, script, script first. And then um, we shoot down ideas and we storyboard everything out. Once we have kind of a idea of what we want to say, then the art kind of flows out of it. But story should always be the one thing that you're serving, especially for production design your staging 
you know, more than anything else. Um, and also it was important to pick the shots and everything before we, we start producing the art because what would work best with what we're trying to accomplish. I do find that sometimes the art might be absolutely amazing, but if the story is not there, it won't, it won't keep you for more than five to 10 minutes. And I think we've all seen films like that that are visually beautiful, but mm -hmm. when there's no story, it's just pretty pictures. Is there any sort of method that can be employed to sort of take those ideas of supporting this, the story with your design work and sort of breaking that down into manageable steps? Always thumbnail, always thinking about composition, always thinking about the story. Um, I usually, what I do is I write three adjectives that the whole story is trying to emote or trying to get out of you. And I try to see as, I, as I'm doing the production, if we're losing sight of that. You always go back to these three adjectives as anchors to keep you on track. Specifically, if, you, if you're running, if you don't have parameters, the more freedom you have, sometimes I find it to be more difficult than when you have very set parameters and very set times. Um, I thrive in TV production because I like the short schedules and I like the having to have that things done and uh, not overthinking it. So letting the artwork kind of flow out, keeping track, thumbnailing everything, and then having a, a big picture of what everything is and then kind of coming a little bit tighter afterwards. So starting with uh, the general and moving closer and closer and closer into the specific? Yeah, but never losing the general. Yeah, always, always keeping in mind the general. Because I look at drawing that way, I'm kind of a dude, uh, like I doodle a lot. <clears throat> so I usually will get too tight on a specific spot and I'll, I'll get too busy with it. <clears throat> and then it loses what I'm doing with everything else. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have to always step back. So anyways, um, let's get into our breakout session. Uh, go ahead, Team West, uh, give us a wave. Hello. And, and then Team East, let's wave from you. All right, so this, these are our teams. So Team East, go ahead and take a break, and we'll be with you very shortly. So um, if someone would like to encapsulate your short film, uh, Serena, I be believe you're directing this. Uh, yeah, it was um, you and my Daniel idea. together. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Uh, so now, give me the pitch of the story. Yeah, sure. So our goal was um, we also did the keyword method, like you mentioned. So a few of the keywords that we thought of is we wanted something that was lighthearted, easy to understand and relatable, uh, and um, a little humorous. So. Our story in like a few sentences would be a dog's imagination um, when trying to protect their owner. And the rest I'll kind of scrub through this um, uh, thumbnailing process just to tell you the story. So the very first scene starts off with like a royal palace and you kind of zoom in on the throne where there's a little kid with a pot of gold. Uh, there's a, still a few changes we have to do to this, but yeah. Um, so as the pot of gold uh, falls down the steps, Suddenly you see the kid wake up and they look up all confused and tense. There'll be an audio cue where you have like thumping and knocking. Suddenly when you shift um, the camera to the uh, front castle doors, it starts, you know, exploding open. And out of it, there's like this shadowy like figure that looms over the throne. Uh, this is still a, a comp comp composition we have to add, but it's basically the shadowy figure starts running towards the throne and you have a POV shot of it like um, attacking the little girl. And just as it's about to get close enough, you have a shadowy figure again come in and this time revealing the dog soldier blocking um, the little girl and the two swords clashing causes a flash of light. And then you have like a low angle shot showing like the little girl on her throne and the dog warrior like protecting it. 
and then you kind of like have a little battle going on they kind of back away from each other a little like tense moment and then as the warrior prepares himself for like a final blow he charges towards the mon the robot monster and then as he's about to cry it cuts to like a little whimper of a tiny puppy and there's like a Roomba and a little baby in the corner on, in its stroller. Fantastic. Okay, I will Super stop Super cute. Here. I like it. <laughs> it's super cute. It's fantastic. It's really funny. Um, so how do you feel about it? So I feel like um, right now at, uh, we have a little too much information. So we're kind of trying to figure out how to condense it with the shots. Yes. So really trying to tell as much information in maybe one shot rather than two, so we save on time. Um, so yeah, and we started with a bit of the visual development when it comes to the character design and the environments. And these are great. It's very good exploration. Um, yeah, perfect. Um, concerns, you have concerns. My concern um, personally, and I'm not sure if everyone in the team agrees uh, as of yet, but I really wanted to make the initial part of it very dramatic so that there's like a stark contrast between the really dramatic scenes and just the mundane everyday life of like a little tiny dog barking at a Roomba. That, that's something that I thought about. Yes. Um, okay. So what's your team, how's your team divided up? Who's doing backgrounds, who's doing what? So um, it's kind of, again, mixed. Uh, Annie worked on thumbnailing the backgrounds. I'm working on making them now. Uh, okay. Brittany worked on characters. Uh, Daniel worked on props. Uh, did I miss anything, guys? I did a little bit of character work, but only like after Brittany had designed them. That's great. Before you start working on your backgrounds and all that stuff, which you already have your keys, which is great. I think you need to condense and I think you need to figure out exactly what shots you need. Right. Uh, that will save you time in the long run because you also will get your shots with the assets you have. Right. Um, it will, it will make, and also it will make your story, uh, your story tighter. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I don't think you need as many shots as you have. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think you need as many camera changes as you have. Mm -hmm. I will save that more for the action sequence. And then in the action sequence, you don't necessarily need to have backgrounds that are very elaborate. You could yeah. use shapes and color cards or whatever it is. So use, use the element of 2D animation in your favor. Um, when you're using action, the backgrounds are kind of a distraction. So you wanna focus on your characters and you wanna fo uh, focus, focus. Focus on your um, on your effects or whatever it is that you're trying to do. I think you guys are in a very good shape. Where are you going? Um, I think your silhouettes are working for your bot. The baby is a great silhouette as well. Just be careful with it looking too much like everything else you've seen before. You want to you wanna have a little bit of a, something that is yours with it. Um, that being said, it's pretty cute. It's very, it's, it's nice. Um, yeah, this is, this is very good work. Um, again, silhouettes. You don't need to have that many options. I will like, you know, kind of cut it down. Um, also, like, is your dog character the knight what is he is he so he's kind of like okay okay he's a knight he's, okay yeah like a protector uh as he sees himself mm -hmm. he seems more than a sword fighter he seems like in a, in a knight he seems like a brute you know so i don't know that's just my personal opinion again that's artistic taste um, okay, so let's talk about set design because that's pretty much my strength. Um, for these backgrounds, I will think a lot, uh, specifically um, when you were opening the shot, 
I think you should have it from a kid's eye level since you're having it, it's a baby. Mm -hmm. So I think it will make, make it a lot more impactful if it's a, it's a baby's eye level. Um, you want it to be regal and grandiose. Is that what you're trying to achieve with this? Right. Okay. Um, mm. It's okay to play with lighting and it's okay to play with shapes. I will play with shapes here a little bit. You, beyond the columns, you don't have to be too descriptive of what's going on um, because it is kind of, you might want to lose them. Um, you can use the columns as shapes also in the, in the fighting sequence as you're rotating or moving around to give a sense of um, where we are in the background. Uh, but be be aware that every background you you drawing takes a lot of time, and we sorry uh, could I no please you? go ahead yeah um we're trying a, a method out uh, where we're blocking it in in Blender we're using like little sprites for the backgrounds and That's we're setting amazing. up this I could show that uh, if, if yes I please. Sure. can I see that yeah sure especially if you're blocking things out in Blender. Um, make sure that you can get some angles in there that are going to be, um, yeah, a, a little bit more in a, a perspective-y view. Yeah. So, so, you can, so you can get some, some great cinematic angles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm, I'm still in the process of like adding in um, whatever we need, but like just for the basic shapes so that we could just render this and then draw over it. So we yeah. have the perspective and everything. No, this so. is this is perfect. I, I do this all the time myself. Okay. okay, great. So that will save you so much time in your angle picking and what you're doing. So that's great. But now what you have to do is a solid design. Since mm -hmm. your whole thing is taking place in one one place, maybe the second one after they come back from the dream sequence. Uh, it will be a second place, but you don't even really need much for the second one. I will say make your design options work for what you're trying to do. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you were to embellish more than anything, it would be around the throne. To make, mm -hmm. it, more, to make it look more regal, a, a throne room, the, the, the purpose of a throne room is for whoever the leader or the king is, is to be higher than everybody else and to give you that sense of looking upwards, okay? So I would, if I were you, stage that up a little bit more. So okay. the, thr the throne is not as lost and okay. um, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem like a church, it seems like a throne room, okay? okay. Um, yeah, other than that, I, th I think you're in great shape. Do you have any questions? Uh, I had a few questions on how we could improve the dog night. Sure. So um, you mentioned that it, it might come off a little mean looking. So do you, do you have any advice on how we could make it look more poised and elegant, but at the same time, someone who protects? Sure. Um, so because you want to add like a sense of comedy to what you're doing and mm -hmm. it, it, you have a baby, babies, like most of the time, how I feel, Mike can speak for this more than I do because of his storyboarding background but um there's not that like you can ha you don't have the opportunity to you uh, to bring as much comedy as you can with the dog part right so I will look at like things that inspire you but at the same time um since it's going to be an anthropomorphic character I will look at um you know what comes to mind um labyrinth like the the dog night i don't know if, i don't know how young you guys are um have you ever seen uh the movie labyrinth i haven't okay i highly recommend it Did we? <laughs> oh this is like before cgi and all that stuff so there's puppeteers that are bringing life into these characters and there there is a character in it that he's he's a knight and he He's protecting a bridge and he's just there and he's the silliest little thing, but his attitude and his command and his, um, the way that he thinks about himself makes him larger than life. But he's the smallest character there and he's the bravest. 
but that's what I think about when you have like a small dog. There's the opportunity of him not just being this brutish, humongous like protector, but his protection and his power comes from his loyalty to the baby, you know? And I think that's more powerful and uh, than just like, just he's strong and brute and all that stuff because he's not in real life, you know? So I think that's an opportunity. Um, but again, this is your project. This is just artistic taste and, you know, whatever you feel that I actually like when people base characters on either characters of they know or people they know or combining two people together. Because then it's clear in your mind, oh, like, no, he wouldn't do that. Or he would do that. Or he will behave this way or another way. You know? So that that's my two cents. Does that help at all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So let's, let's switch over to Team East. Okay. And then any other leftover questions, we'll just do that a little later. OK. Well, thank Good. you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you very nice meeting y'all. You too. Nice meet you too. <laughs> Bye. So, who wants to tell me a little bit about what's going on and what you guys are thinking and all that stuff? Uh, so, we got to a common point on a few things, but we still have different ideas for the perfect solution for the, our characters. So we uploaded a few versions, but the main thing that we are going for on the design level is that she is more rounded and she, she's like the moon and he's more like a star. Cause, oh, by the way, I have to tell you about the story so it makes sense. Yes, <laughs> it's a story about a witch who's doing like a really, dangerous potion on her cauldron so she can bring her dead husband back to life. It, we sort of did the three adjective thing that you were talking about um, without sort of even knowing it maybe, or maybe we did when we implemented it, but so the three lonely and then scary and then cute. Warm or cute. Or yeah, yeah, warm. <laughs> Actually, the, the last one was a bunch of words were was, yeah, it was warm, like happy. feel good happy time yeah just <laughs> synonyms. but so like in the beginning you're like oh this witch is all by herself making something it's like a crazy old witch uh, you know what i mean like you don't really know what she's doing and then like the more it goes on the more she's like getting frustrated and it's like then this big explosion of like this scary skull melting and then you see like the silhouette of her husband. And if you like sort of pick up the clues from like the first pan and some of the uh, prop design and stuff, like the other thing is like the witch is sort of symbolized by the crescent moon shape and the dead husband is symbolized by this star. So okay. like, like, there, for example, you have all their props and you have like, for example, the mug, his is big and has the star and hers is smaller, like thinner and has the moon. It's like, it starts, it's a, it pans over. And then we got the, in the cauldron shot, she's doing sort of like standard weird witch things. Cool transition we thought. And then. The idea is that as you go, it gets like darker and darker. At the beginning, you just feel like she's lonely, alone there. And then she starts to get crazier with those items and the potion is not working. So she gets crazier and crazier and she starts to throw like different things. Like for example, you just pass through the head. So that's yeah. his head. That's actually the last moment. She's like really, really mad and she has no hope with this potion anymore. So she just threw the head and well, explodes and with we see it and probably work right like there's her husband not he's a zombie and he's gonna get you but she doesn't care she loves him so she squeezes him and the his eyes pop, pops out 
she sees the, the eye, get, grabs it, kisses it, puts back on, and they are a happy couple every after, after probably, maybe. Yeah, the end question mark. Okay, so questions and concerns. What are your questions, yeah. concerns, anything? Go ahead. Do you have any questions or concerns? Uh, I believe it would be related, some will be related to the design because this, this contrast we we're talking about, like she's scary, but then she ends up being cute. We don't know where should we, how should we level it on her design? Like how cute should she be? How uh, scary should she be? And if you see the, the design examples, you see some are really, really rounded and others have a bit more of a crazy face and a crazy hair. They, they all have like a very similar idea to them. I, I think they're conveying what you're trying to say, especially this first one. Um, this one? Yeah. I think if for, for anything else, I think you should think about the silhouettes, which I think you have. But more than anything, if you just cut it, because you're going to have a lot of darks and lights in this, um, especially with the cauldron is working or not, whatever, you know, and especially because it's a silhouette when it, he comes out of the cauldron. I think just working just black silhouettes right next to each other and see how they work um, with each other, see if they complement each other, you know, because uh, you're, you're, you're using so much of that metaphor of the, the moon and the star and all that stuff. And I think there's something to be said about them being like complementary and a piece of each other. So that's for the design. Um, I will... I will say that think about your character design inhabiting the world as well. So, because you can't just design characters and then they don't fit the world. If you are you gonna have heavy line on your characters in the animation? I don't know if we've necessarily. We're sort of trying to figure out and finalize the design and make that choice. But it seems like most of us tend to draw more as like the one that you have on the screen right now with that heavy line, yeah. Okay, then if the, that's your natural way of doing it, maybe just keep that, keeping in mind that if you have a heavy line, heavy line like that, that perhaps having too much black line or just having a line in your background might be competing too much with your character. Let's look at, uh, can we look at the backgrounds? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three moods for the background like ideas for the, those moments we talked about, the sad and lonely, uh, scary, and finally the, actually this is sad, the sad and lonely, I believe, uh, scary and warm. Color counting, perfect. So I, I do see through the background the, the, the whole theme being carried out of two things, the two mugs, the two cups, the two boots, the two shoes, the two, the two brooms, so all that stuff. Now notice that you always put them flat and, and right next to each other. The brooms are flat right next to each other. The shoes are flat right next to each other. The cups are flat right next to each other as well. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a great idea. Um, so how do we convey that? Um, do you, are, you, are you guys gonna stay with mostly a flat background like this, like a, like a UPA Warner Brothers Looney Tunes style? Yeah, that was sort of the idea, and we were, and like the, um, probably that, that coffee table with the mugs and that like half opacity banister is going to be like parallaxed in the foreground. Perfect. Okay. So let's start playing with shape. Then. I think it's funny that you mentioned uh, UPA because we didn't even talk about UPA, but we were actually thinking about the geometric uh, shapes for the designs. And that's actually a really good reference for that. Yeah, so what you can do since your characters are gonna be so heavy in line and it's, they live within the lines, right? Maybe what we can do is, it's make the line on your backgrounds not the thing that keeps everything contained. But let's, let's look at this. Uh, first thing that I will say is I would lower 
I would lower the the horizon horizon line, uh, bring everything down a little bit. I think foreground elements will like add a lot to what you're doing, but I do think that they should be a lot darker and they should be more like silhouettes more than anything else. You don't need to be too descriptive with them. It could be just shapes in the foreground and stuff like that. So um, since everything is gonna be so flat, you don't necessarily have to be too crazy about perspective, but you do need to bring some sort of dimensional, like dimension to, to the drawing somehow. Um, Cause actually I think your style will benefit from a more wonky type of instruction. But wonky doesn't mean that it's not in perspective. You know, uh, since we change a little bit of the perspective here. Sure. Sure. So I would work if I were you mostly with shapes first to try to accomplish what things would look like. And then um, and then come in and bring in the line. Something to think about in these foreground elements as well is like things like piles of books or like like a jar with some creepy stuff in it or yeah yeah you exactly know, we were uh, thinking like uh have them like sort of warp distorted like beakers and uh potion yeah. bottles and stuff and, but then that's the other part about it that they're in the foreground so you don't have to go crazy and draw the whole shape you can just yeah. do what and it gives you enough information you know and it actually brings in the audience a little bit more because it makes them go like what is that so you know like you're kind of inviting them inside or into your thing so i don't know if we need to have those there but the thing that i like is that since you have so much light then you can come in inside of anything but also like given line different weights to help you give a little bit of a variation on your drawing. Sorry, it's still pixelated. It's really. And then, like, also, like, see how right now I'm using the shift button and it's kind of a clutch sometimes. And then coming in back and like putting a little bit of like hand drawn on top will add a lot of character to what you're trying to do. Um, you can disagree or you can agree with me, but. Everybody has his own preferences. So I like the idea that if you put your characters on top of this, also like you don't have to go fully black with the lines. I will kind of either colorize or bring the lines a lot of it down so that they're not really taking over everything. Some of what you're doing has actually reminded me quite a bit of uh the development art and stuff from uh, 101 Dalmatians. Yes. Oh, that's that's a great reference. Yeah, that would be amazing. But see, like your perspective is lower now. Um, you don't necessarily have to be a slave to the perspective, especially because of the type of style that you guys are doing. So I will say that in every part of the room, I will kind of like keep the perspective. Like this is the perspective for here and then might change the perspective a little bit for there so like it doesn't because like as you're getting so far out into the room like your perspective over here is going to be so so distorted you know um like this this foreign element is great um I really like this thing, this front thing, especially if you're gonna be parallaxing. Are you guys gonna be doing that? Yeah. 
That's awesome. Yeah, so, we're gonna put, I think a little spider in or something. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, so for example, like you see, so I like to um, group things together. So it creates like, see like you have one element here, one element here, one element here. It's like they're repeating. I like grouping things together and giving like space to uh, having positive and negative spaces and grouping them together. So like, for example, like, and the shoes kind of together in one section, creating this open space here. Uh, uh, okay, this is, a ch this is a choice here, the door, I like it. This is cool, I haven't seen that. Um, so making this space open all here. So then you can have this space right next to the door and it's not so repetitive. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Um, same with the, the banner, maybe if you wanna move it this way or something, it's just, uh, this should be like almost like a musical rhythm to what you're doing. Um, same, see here, like they're all like about the same size and the same separation. I would like grab three of them and clump them together and then maybe two of them and put them together and maybe leave in a little bit of space. Uh, I think that will help a lot on the composition. Um, you're doing that already with the, the storytelling with the two items that is all, all theirs, but like, what does this space say? Who came up with this story? It was actually a collaboration. So I had an idea for, uh, for this story, but instead of the husband was actually, a, she was uh, casting a, a cat, but she was like really nasty and was just like a cute cat. But after the cat, the, the spell works, she would kill the cat and it will become a ghost and then will be her ghost mascot. But it was a bit more a bit to for the group, and I don't know who who came up with the wizard. I, I don't remember actually, the wizard ha husband. I'm not exactly sure. I, I don't know if it was one of us or if it was all of us. Yeah, it just came right. Yeah, it was that's sort of that's, like that's another bit, cool but... thing about this project. Like sometimes ideas just come with us, like someone saying a, a thing, and the other one, oh yeah, so we could do it like this way, and then. We go for that and and then on and on. Mm -hmm. But it's a really collaborative story for sure. Cool. So like you can use the line itself or the drawing itself to say a lot without having to go back in there and draw everything. I really do hope you keep that element and you parallax it for sure. Uh, but let's give it a little bit of... Sorry. We're going to invite Team West back. And then uh, we're going to break because you guys have lots to do today after this. And uh, we'll say goodbye to our wonderful guest uh, mentor today, Luciano Herrera. All right, you guys, um, a warm thank you to Luciano for coming and uh, helping us out. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. Um, Luciano is a wealth of knowledge. And uh, any last questions before we say goodbye and send you guys back to work? Nope, not a one? Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks, Luciano. And, thank, uh, you. Uh, thank you. We will talk soon, I'm sure. And thank you. Thank you all. And one thing I have to say is, Everybody's work was great. I really like it. I think that the only difference between anybody that is working and you guys is just time and mileage. So keep at it. There's, I have not seen anything here talent-wise that I will not hire you. I, I, I will hire every single one of you if I had a spot right now. So like, 
keep at it. It's hard, but just keep at it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. It's really. Um, it feels like really good. It's really grateful to see how much we did in this amount of time and to be able to like join this this opportunity because it's the kind of thing you cannot do alone like there's no way you can solve all those stuff without uh having other opinions and changing going back and forth it definitely went better than yesterday we were a lot more uh calm like i feel like yesterday we were very hyped up so a lot of us were like on our tiptoes and we were like really stressed about making sure we get things done but that might have like clouded our judgment but today i feel like um we were definitely more focused and we really explored a lot so that was nice and uh yeah especially after the feedback session we just had like there's there's a lot that we didn't realize which we can now implement pretty good i feel like today was really successful in finding out what we're doing with design and the feedback was great so um i'm learning people's quirks a little bit more like i'm noticing like for example daniel's more prone to like the action so he wants to do more action based um uh annie she's like happy go lucky and is willing to do <laughs> anything you throw her away <laughs> which is nice and then serena um sometimes i'll throw like a couple ideas whether it's like design or story wise and it's kind of like takes me a moment to kind of convince her or sometimes not convince her. <laughs> it was interesting. I'd say I'm not the strongest at design, so I was kind of like out of my element for a lot of today, but I was here for most of the day instead of going to school. So it was nice being with the group the whole day. It was really like um, eye-opening, realizing how much work goes into laying out rooms and like how to get so much story into such a quick shot without making it like hard for people to understand. He told us like during the action shots, we need to do much more simpler backgrounds. And we, we kind of thought of that, but we weren't sure if we were going to do it. And him just saying that helped us like said that, okay, that's probably the best way to go. And I feel like that for sure would have helped us in the long run, because if we'd done, if we'd done the, the big shots, each uh, the most detailed shots for those um, action shots, it would have taken much more time. I can apply this going forward when I do my own layouts or like when I go into other projects going forward because I'm gonna have to start looking for jobs in about a year. <laughs>